I, I just uh, was experimenting with different types of materials just to try to get a different look to, to everything. Um, I was doing primarily oils on canvas and wood and it just, I don't know, there was something that looked kind of just so classical about it, you know, and I, I wanted it to somehow look contemporary. I realized that my stuff just didn't really look like 2000 and whatever, 10, you know. No matter what I used, uh, it still, as long as it was with oil, it still, I, it always looked like someone else's, you know. So I finally discovered plexiglass just because it was around and I had a friend who was an architect and he, he said try this, you know, because he's used to materials, different materials. And uh, I was first originally painted on the front of it with oils and it looked really cool. But after one day it dried and peeled right off. <laughs> so I realized that it's not going to work. But then I kind of looked as it was peeling off and I would try to play with it, I looked underneath from the back and I saw, oh, okay, so I can actually make something on the front that will be seen from the back. So then I tried just acrylic paint and that worked quite well. And I started to dilute the acrylic paint with, uh, with, a, with a liquid gel medium just to get more fluidity. And then I realized, well, if I'm going to do that, maybe I can try ink. So I got, I just kept experimenting, experimenting, experimenting with different types of inks. I mean, I must have tried 10 different inks before. I found one that finally would actually stick and work, you know. And then, yeah, and then it was, uh, it was a love affair. Yeah. With portrait, with faces, uh, what I usually do is uh, I get a model and uh, I draw with from from life uh, with the model with uh, usually charcoal. Really concentrate on. Uh, on the, the anatomy and just familiarizing myself with the with the, the sh shadows and the face and the, the contour and everything. Because with the plastic, the problem is, is it's so fast, there's not a lot of room for error. So you really have to, it's like, it's like almost like doing, like Whistler used to do etchings before he would do a painting. So you see the Whistler painting and it's very loose and very free. It looks like he did it in five seconds, but in actuality, he etched it for months before. So the, the preparation before the actual uh, painting on the plastic is in, intense and, and big, immense, you know, it takes a long time. So I'll usually do a drawing and then I'll sometimes do an oil study also for color. And then once I finish that, I take the drawing and the oil study and then I do the painting from those looking at that. So I don't use the model actually for the actual painting on, on Perspex. Well, because the plexiglass is transparent, I have to have something behind it. So when I work, because you would see the board or you would see the table or you would see anything below it. So I just put uh, a piece of wood underneath and I start painting on that. I usually paint it light gray, something neutral. Uh, but I've also experimented with painting the wood different colors because that obviously shows through and it brings even another dimension into it. So you can have ink on the front with a certain kind of paint underneath and that brings a whole new new thing into it you know like if you have very vivid the other thing of the problem with the inks is they're really pure primary colors so sometimes they're too punchy so if i introduce a complement behind it like if i'm doing really bright red it's too red so i'll put green behind it and that'll neutralize it and kill it a bit